Hi guys, Maske here from YME Group. I'm going to run you through the training on our Allback AV7000H, which is also the same for the 4000H. So we always do a pre-start uh, every morning before we start. So we're going to check the levels, oil levels, water levels. Uh, we're going to check our tyres and we're going to check uh, road user before we start. Then in the cab here, I'm going to show you that we only put in um, handbrake alarm and two switches for the work lights and the beacons. Now bear in mind that the beacons will also start whenever we turn the PTR on. And if it's a rental unit, it'll have our E-Road in it as well. So here we're going to talk about the filtration uh, of the cyclone and the filters before it goes into the vacuum pump. So we've got our primary shut off at the top of the truck. This comes into the cyclone shut off here, so the air comes in the side here and spins. Uh, with any moisture uh, dropping out in the middle is a vortex, which will be emptied out through here. Now really, really important that we empty this here every time we unload the back. So whether we open the door up or whether we're pushing product out the back, every time we unload, we always empty this here. Really crucial. From there it goes through the vacuum brake, which we'll talk about later, and comes through this four-way valve. This four-way valve will operate the vacuum as a, either in vacuum or pressure. So we're in neutral. When we hop out of the cab, we're going to go through and we're going to push it into vacuum. That'll give us the ability to do our sucking that we need to do. If we ever get a blockage in our suction boom, we can pressurise this unit. How we do that is we neutralise it slowly like that and go across to pressure. And that'll blow any blockage out of the vacuum system, whether it be hoses or boom. The air exhausts down through here, and it comes down through here into this final filter. This final filter, we can always tell uh, when we're operating by these two gauges whether we're operating correctly. One's before the filter, one's after the filter. If there's a discrepancy in on these gauges here, we know we've got a block, we've got a partially blocked filter. So one might be showing that it's sitting at minus 20, the other showing minus 10, we know we've got a discrepancy. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut the system down, we're going to make sure that's in neutral so that we are at atmospheric pressure. So really, really important, that's in neutral before we open this here. Before we open that, we're also going to open the tap, which will also make sure we are at, in neutral atmospheric pressure. Once that's open, we can then open this lid. This needs to be done daily, so at the end of every day, Always crucial to check this. And there we have our final filter. So we can undo that with a crescent, and we can take that out and we can wash it on site if we need to with our pressure cleaner. Um, always check and make sure we don't have any compromise. If there's a compromise in the filter, we do not use it. Um, and normally your company will have a spare one on the shelf, uh, otherwise we can send one overnight. So really crucial, if there's ever a compromise on there, we don't use it. So wash it out be put back in wet, it's not a problem, and then we do this back up. So I'm going to talk about the maintenance for the diesel flush of the vacuum pump. So this little canister here has got diesel in it, and we use it for flushing and moisturising the inside the internals of the vacuum pump. So when we shut down at the end of the day, we always want to do a diesel flush, so we're going to have the vacuum pump running, we're going to have it in vacuum, and we're going to open this here for two seconds, and only two seconds. So it's one, two, turn off. We then release that back to neutral, and what that's done is it's put a film of diesel through the vacuum pump. And you'll understand that why sometimes when we are sucking clay type material, uh, we get a, a moisture go through the pump that's got a bit of clay in it. When the vacuum pump stops, it's hot, and sometimes that can bind up to the point where you go to start the pump the next morning, and the vacuum pump won't start. The hydraulics won't turn it over because it's glued together with that um, moisture and that residue. By doing, the diesel, by doing the diesel flush, we eliminate that, so it keeps it nice and fluid. So I'm going to talk about the pipe work that we provide with the Hydrovax. So we always have our six to five reducer. That's for the back for the, on the suction boom, and we've got our five inch five inch digging wand. 
So we always want to reduce uh, at the end where we're sucking before we go into the six inch overhead suction beam pipe. This one here has got additional two metre and one metre six inch hoses that we can provide as well. The hose reel and the wands, we've got our standard hose reel here, 30 metres of hose on it. Obviously between the clicks, we're going to rock out, pull it to release it. We also have our digging wand. Now really crucial, this wand is only to be used for hydrovacuum. It's not used for cleaning the truck or doing any cleaning inside the tank. Uh, so because it's a ceramic disc, it's got a little seat there that the ceramic disc seats sits on. So really, really crucial that when we start, we always place it towards the ground so that the ceramic disc is sitting on the seat when the pressure comes on. Really, really, really crucial to make sure whenever we start it, it's facing the ground. Once it's started, we can put it wherever we want. But just remember, it's only for hydrovac, not for cleaning. We do have a cleaning wand that we provide standard with the truck. And that's this little fella here. And it comes with multiple nozzles as well, so it comes with a spray lance, and it'll go from spray right down to pencil. So the spray lance is for cleaning, cleaning the truck, cleaning your hoses. When we open the rear door, we can clean the seal, we can clean the sight glasses. So that's our cleaning one. We've got a pencil one in there as well. Really, really good for if you've got product that's hung up in the front of the tank. We can pencil it out and that'll come away as well. So that's, these here are always sitting in your side cabinets on the passenger side. So really, really important, before we open any valves or try to open the back door, we make sure that the tank is at atmospheric pressure. So how we do that is we have the four-way valve in neutral. We're also going to slightly lift the tank up so that we can break the vacuum. Okay, so we've got, we know then that we're at atmospheric pressure. The other way we can tell is we can look at this gauge here, and the gauge we're sitting at zero. If that gauge is sitting at zero, our vacuum break is open, and we're in neutral, we know we're at atmospheric pressure. It is then safe to open any valves and discharge the only time we won't be at atmospheric pressure is if we are doing the unloading procedure where we are sucking through here and blowing back out. We have got an SOP that explains the safe operating procedures for the unloading or clearing of any blockages. Hydraulic rear door. We've got three valves here. That there's your standard load valve. When we open the back door up, you'll see it's got an up stand up inside there. That's for any loading that we don't want to, that we want to do that's not involving the suction boom. We get a discharge, and we've also got a second discharge, which we call the decant valve. And that's for decanting water out. If we're on site somewhere, we want to get rid of water, and we want to keep the product inside. That's a slotted pipe that goes up there that'll only let the water out. So this is how you unload a truck, so you don't get product all over everything. We open that up and we've got no product coming out because we've got a whole lot of spoil in here. So we go around to a vacuum uh, control panel and we start the vacuum pump. We go to a four-way valve and we put that on vacuum. With this open, what that does is it creates a channel through there. It'll suck air in, into the pump, into the tank, and it'll stir everything up. We can then release the four-way valve into neutral. The product will come out. So all this watery liquid will come out and we'll leave the other heavy stuff in there. If it doesn't happen the first time, put the four-way valve back onto vacuum, suck it again, and then we can then go slowly from vacuum into pressure and blow the liquid out. Once we've done that, we can then go to our control panel and open up our rear door, which will then only have spoil in the bottom, makes a whole lot cleaner uh, process for unloading. We've also got our sight glasses on the back here. Um, we clean them once we have the door open. If we ever have to replace them, we've got one of these here. If we get caught on site, that goes in there and we use that there to do it up. Key note here, if we replace a glass, once that there comes into contact with the glass, it's only a quarter of a turn. Okay, if we do it any tighter, when we pull a vacuum up, it'll just shatter. So a quarter of a turn once we come into contact. The door has got hydraulic lockers on it, so we don't have to put a 
door stay on the back. So when it's open, it's locked. Um, there's no way that it can, can come down even if we broke a hydraulic hose or we lost all the hydraulic fluid, the door won't come down. Likewise with the door locks, the door locks are over centre. So if those hydraulic lines break, the door won't come open. Okay, it's over centre and it's safe as safe um, to continue with no hydraulic oil if that was the case. Right, I'm going to run you through the control panel and how we operate the vacuum truck. And here we've got a screen that tells us uh, that everything's operating correctly. We hit our PTO, remembering that we've got no PTO switch in the cab, so everything starts from here. All the lights that are red, we can't operate. Anything that's blue, we can, and anything that's green is on. So we start our PTO, we can run our vacuum pump on, we can run the revs up on low idle and high idle, and we can turn our pressure cleaner on. If we want to use our remote, we don't have to worry about that. All we have to do is start the PTO, and we grab our remote out of here, remembering that sitting in that cradle, it's charging. So really, really be really particular when you put it back in, that it slots back in there and goes onto this charging remotes there. So pull that out. We want to use our remote, make sure the emergency stop's not going. We've got our PDO on, we hit our start remote control, that'll go green. We push the on button there, and we'll see the, the green light come up here saying we've got connectivity. From here, we've got all the functions on there, we've got on here. So we've got our all our boom operations here. We've got our boom valve, so that's the valve at the top of the suction boom, so we can turn that on, turn that off if we get a blockage. Our water blaster, our vacuum pump, we can turn our work lights on and we've got our RPMs there. So when we want to stop, we turn the remote off and we pop that back into there. Also comes with a case that we can put around our neck as well, put the remote in there. If we're wanting to put the hoist up, all we're going to do is we're going to put our PTO on and shut that and we have our controls here. So how we go about it is, like we spoke about earlier, we're going to raise the hoist slightly so that we break the vacuum. So there's our vacuum brake there. As the hoist comes up, that disengages, which means we're at atmospheric pressure. So we raise the hoist a little bit and then we're going to unlock our doors. So we push that down, we unlock them, and we hold it until we hear all four of them unlock, and then we physically go and check and make sure they're open. All four are unlocked, we can then open our rear door, and there will be an acoustic beeper go on while the door is opening. Once the door is fully open, then we can raise the hoist right up, and we can empty out. Remembering that we always have to be on level ground when we're operating the hoist. So we wash out with our spray lamps, and then we put everything back into its normal position. So what we do is we have to push the hoist safety valve, which is a dead man, to lower the hoist. So we lower that hoist back down, we then close the door, and then we lock it, and we'll hear the four locks click as they lock into that over centre position. So we're gonna, we've got 2,000 litres of water that we can carry on board, this front section of the tank. It's fresh water. We load it through here, goes up and into our tank at the top. So it's open to atmospheric pressure, so we can pressure load that through there with a hydrant or whatever we have in our yard. We've also got a water filter that we need to check daily, which is up under here, which says clean daily. We need to check that on a daily basis, especially if we are loading water from a recycling system in the cities. Uh, that goes through to our water blaster here, water pressure blaster. It's a 5,000 PSI blaster. We generally have it running at about 4,000. And on the lower RPMs, we can run it down to two to 2,500 PSI. Uh, we have a drain point here, which also acts as a hand wash. So it's not drinking water. If we run our tank out of water, we've got a sensor there that'll turn the, turn the pressure cleaner off. Once we fill it back up with water again, we may have an airlock in the system, which won't allow us to start. So it will show us on our control panel that we're still out of water, even though the tank might be full. So we need to bleed the water back across the 
the sensor so that the sensor recognises we've got water in. And the way we do that is this tap here. We turn that tap there on and we bleed water out through there. Which will then recognise we've got water and we can restart the pressure cleaner. So we've got three emergency stops on the unit, one on both sides and one at the back. Whatever operation we're doing and we need to emergency stop, we hit that and it shuts the whole system down. So the motor will turn off, the PDO will disengage. The only way to restart it is to make sure these are back out. We hop back in our truck, start the engine again, and we go through the whole process of restart. So on the control panel here, we've got our connectivity there. We've got our red PDO, we haven't got our PTO turned on. We've got our park brake on. We've got our water levels correct. And our remote, uh, our emergency stops are out. The remote will go green when we've got the remote control on. The tank's not tipped and the boom's stowed. One of the things with the water is if we run out of water, we need to bleed the system. So the whole system's run hydraulically. So we've got a hydraulic tank here, it shows our level, we should be sitting at that level of oil and the temperature gauge in there uh, won't fluctuate uh, unless we have a, a bleed off problem. We've got our cooling fans up the top there, we've got a sensor up there that if the oil ever gets to 80 degrees it'll shut the system down. Now the only way it'll get to 80 degrees if we're, is if we've got a bleed off happening um, where we're heating up the oil. Uh, and it's not operating correctly. So normal under normal operating conditions, even on the hottest day in New Zealand, we'll never reach 80 degrees. Right, to wrap up, I want to run through four things we must do daily for our Hydrobax. We want to clean and check our water filter on the other side of the truck to make sure that that's always clean so we don't starve our water blaster. We always want to make sure this is emptied every time we unload the truck. We open that up, and if we want to check it to make sure it is empty, we can always start the vacuum pump, put it on pressure, and blow it out to make sure it's clear. Number two. Number three, we're always going to check our filter at the end of every day to make sure we haven't got any compromise there and it's nice and clean. And the fourth is the diesel flush. So remember, vacuum pump on, on vacuum, two seconds, one, two, turn off, back to neutral, shut the pump down. Thank you, enjoy.